Hi everyone, Miss Pickerskill here. Um, yes, I know I'm dressed in the same stuff as I was on Tuesday. That's because I'm recording them all together today. Um, but I want to remind you, with it being Wednesday today, um, tomorrow is World Book Day. So please get your costumes ready and sorted. Look forward to seeing you in school for lots of fun activities. Um, and yeah, we'll get the, uh, the day rolling. It'll be, it'll be a fun one, even though we've not got everyone back, which is sad, we'll still make it. Uh, super duper. Uh, so on to um, our um, sessions reading. Let me just share the screen for you. Uh, right, so um, we're not on B alert yet. We are on campaigns and conservation. So we're on to sort of the more positive side um, now. We did look on Monday and Tuesday at um, sort of how animals are becoming endangered and um, what that looks like, what is what is what does it mean by an animal being endangered? Um, then we looked at why they're under threat. Unfortunately, it's because a lot of human actions and what main animals are completely endangered now. Uh, we then looked at some of the reasons why um, how um, disrupting their homes can really affect animals becoming endangered. And then also the fact that illegal crimes so the selling um, and poaching of animals uh, for either their skin, for their fur, for their um, pusts, for their teeth, and um, how all of that can really, really affect the population of animals. And alongside that, um, the invaders sort of various diseases that kill animals that they're not used to, and also um, animals that may have been used to kill a certain other type of animal have then, um, the population of them have got bigger and then they become more dangerous to animals that we don't want to um, be killed okay now when I mean animals being killed I'm more talk about you know when they're saying about pests to do with the toad and that was where there was a lot of um, smaller insects that were killing the plants so what the Australians did was uh, bring in these these um, toads to then uh, the South African toad to then um, kill those pests so that they didn't kill the um, plants but then it ended up that the other animal these toads ended up killing and being very, very harmful to other animals so it's sort of really um, didn't do the job. It did a bit of the job, but then it ended up doing a worse job um, in the long run. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to look at today is something on a positive note. We're going to look at campaigns and conservation. So what are people doing or have done in the past and are doing now to protect animals and stop everything that's happened before that we've read about? Um, and then bee alert, why it's really important to protect our bees, which we know that we're all very passionate about anyway. So campaigns and conservation. It's not all bad news for the natural world, as many people are working hard to preserve the planet's plants and creatures. The work of conservationists take many forms, from tackling rare species to rebuilding habitats. Use your voice. Never think that you and your friends are powerless. Public pressure can make a big difference. In 2016, over 500,000 people signed a petition that convinced the European Union to continue to protect many of Europe's wild areas, including wetlands and meadows. And after years of campaigns in 2017, the Chinese government banned the buying and selling of elephant ivory. And it's mad, absolutely mad to think that in 2017 that was still happening. China used to import more ivory than any other nation. So this is a massive step forward. And if there's a lot of money to be made, there'll be poachers out there hunting these elephants to get that money. Uh, let's have a look what does it say on this bird. Um, some critically endangered species like this um, pestrel chick are bred in zoos before being re reintroduced in the wild. And I know that um, Cheshire Zoo actually does a lot of conservation work um, and a lot of research into um, protecting animals and potentially having them when the baby's in the zoo, giving them all the survival skills and then letting them out in the wild. I know that that is quite common now. In 1974, there were just four Mauritius kestrels left in the world. Following a breeding program and careful protection in the wild, there are now around 4,000 birds, which is fantastic. So it just shows that the population can be built up with extra care. In reserve, the world's first large scale nature reserve was Yellowstone National Park. I really want to go there, that's in America, um, which um, opened in 1872. Today there are over 200,000 of these important places. 
The UN estimates that they cover 15.4% of land and 3.4% of oceans on Earth. Park rangers work hard to protect the environment and creatures in the reserves, reserves from poachers pollution and illegal dumpings, that means um, dumping rubbish that may harm the animals. Take action. Join a conservation charity or support its cause by visiting its website. Adopt an animal. And I know that Mr. Colvin in reception has adopted um, a bee for each class or each child in his class has adopted a bee, which is brilliant. Um, including the World Wildlife Fund, Defenders of the Wild and the Oceana, run schemes that let you contribute to the vital conservation work. Why not organise a bake sale at school to adopt a creature in your class? Visit local nature reserves and see the work performed by the rangers. You might even get the chance to volunteer and help out in some way. Brilliant. So let's have a look at Bee Alert. Bees are not only beautiful creatures, they are also incredibly important to nature and human life. But their numbers are falling all around the world fast. Bees need your help. What do bees do? Bees carry pollen on their legs and bodies as they buzz from flower to flower, looking for nectar to eat. Pollen needs to be taken from one flower to another for plants to reproduce and make more. Bees help to pollinate more than a hundred important crop species, including beans, apples and blueberries. Without them, we'd be seriously short of food. Why are bees in danger? Habitat loss, that means their homes, losing their homes, and the use of pesticides. So that means, remember we said that farmers and other people were spraying poison on plants that didn't kill the plants, but killed all of the animals that killed the plants. Um, are two reasons why bees are struggling. The UK, for example, has lost 97% of its flower rich meadows since 1930. That's massive, that's almost all of them. Paving over flower beds and lawns also put pressure on bees. They simply can't find enough food to eat. Nasty neonics. In farming, pesticides called neonicals poison the sap and nectar of plants. They actually poison the plants. Um, and then the pests that feed on them. Unfortunately, the casualties include the bees and the butterflies. So the bees and the butterflies go on those plants to collect the pollen. It ends up being poisonous and they end up dying. The Guardian Guide to Being Bee Friendly. The good news is that there's plenty of easy everyday things you can do to give bees a helping hand. Look at websites of environmental organisations like Friends of the Earth. You can get bee saver kits from them and join online campaigns to ban neonics. Why not make your garden, backyard or window box more bee friendly too? Get your parents to check they don't use plant sprays, which contains neonics. Grow plants which flower in winter and spring times when it can be hard for bees to find food. And I'll tell you what the bees love um, outside my door. They love the lavender absolutely love the lavender and they feed on that in the spring. Plant lupins, lavender, they are foxgloves and other bee friendly plants are in flower beds. Herbs like chives and rosemary are easy to grow in tubs and good for the bees. So are strawberries and raspberries. Leave out a shallow bowl or saucer of water for thirsty bees. Bees can't swim so add some stones or marbles for them to drink. Super, really good tips there. Um, right, okay, so we've looked at the conservation um, of animals and the F great efforts that are going towards repairing what's happened and then how we can protect our bees at home. And I can't believe 97% of our flower rich areas have, have, uh, have gone because we've either paved over them or we've grassed over them or we've built over them. And that really does affect the poor bees that are trying to survive. Uh, super, so what I'd like you to do is it said that you can sign up to petitions to join a conservation charity. Why not when you're at home or if you're at school, have a search for conservation charities um, and see what they ask to do, see what, see what tips they give you um, to help the animals um, around the world. Okay, right, tomorrow we are going to look at um, going wild, 
and grubs up. And that, believe it or not, because it's our third day, Thursday session, that will be our last couple of pages of the book. And we will have finished the book. That's all I've got left, those yellow pages full of nothing. Um, and then Friday, we will finish off with a news round. And that will be the end to our um, reading sessions for now, sadly. But it'll be nice to get everyone back, get back to a bit of normality. OK, uh, lovely. Right. I will see you all tomorrow for our Thursday session on Guardian.